Hello, this is Evangelist Steve Morris. This is uh, lesson number three in our series on Bible prophecy. I hope you've been reading along with me and studying the Word of God. This is from my book, The Great Tribulation. I had this book published on online, but I took it off because it included, I found out the pre-tribulation wrath is not true. It's not, it's not real. It was from uh, not mentioned, or not in existence, I don't think, before 1830. And I believed it and preached it. And you can look them online at my message, Pre-Wrath pre uh, Rapture. But um, I want you to be saved. If you're not saved, I want you to get saved. I'm after you. Remember, the Bible is God's word. And that's one reason why we're talking about Bible prophecy. There's no mistakes in it. Uh, without, without excuse, you could go buy a Bible, a King James Bible, for a dollar at the dollar store. A letter from God that tells what's on the other side of eternity. Football player, former Patriots uh, football player Aaron Hernandez hung himself in jail yesterday, day before yesterday. It's sad any life has to end that way. But I heard there was a Bible and, and he had wrote a note before in his cell. Uh, before he died. I hope he made things right with God. But uh, remember, you want to go to heaven, you want to escape, go into hell. You only have to do one sin, one time in your whole life to be guilty of that. Everybody's soul is guilty. I'm going to write a sermon, uh, I'm going to publish a sermon called, um, Are You Heading for he Are You Going to Hellfire? The Bible says there's real fire in hell. And then the only one thing you have to do this is how sinful every one of us is. The only thing we have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Trust his blood atonement, that he paid for your sins. And uh, and uh, put your faith in that, not in your church, not in your traditions, not in your good works, and thou shalt be saved. Let's go ahead and get started. I hope you'll pray for me, and I hope you'll subscribe to this channel so you'll help me uh, uh, on, on YouTube. Jesus, we're talking about the messianic prophecies of Jesus Christ. We're talking about um, uh, fulfilled in Jesus Christ, that he was the son of God. We talked about in lesson two, the last thing we left off. In beginning in lesson three, Jesus had to be of the seed of Abraham. It couldn't be just any random person out of the millions of millions of persons that have ever ever born. He had to be born of the uh, be descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He had to be of the family of David of the tribe of Judah. He had a specific royal bloodline. That's why it talks about in Matthew, so and so beget so and so so and beget so and so, so the Jewish people could know he fulfilled the promises of God of being a descendant of a certain family tribe of the father of a family of Abraham, to the, to the tribe of Judah, to the family of David. So and so. That's why they have that in, in the book of Luke. Mary, I think it's Mary's bloodline, and um, and 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 bloodline was Father Joseph. The prophecy was in Genesis twenty two eighteen. Turn in your Bibles, Genesis twenty two eighteen. I hope you'll get a King James Bible and follow along with me. And whether you use this for a Bible study for your Bible Institute. Or if you just read it along daily in devotions, or if you just join, watch it on YouTube to watch, get your daily Bible. Um, I hope it'll help you. It really helped me and encouraged my faith. Genesis 22, verse 18. Get a King James 1611 Bible and you've got the Word of God. You don't have to doubt it. And in thy seed, he didn't say seeds, he said one. Seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because they have, thou hast obeyed my voice. It was fulfilled in Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, the book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. In Galatians 3.16, it says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not to many seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. The importance of of the event in Genesis twenty two eighteen is established when we realize that God swears by himself in his relationship to the patriarchs. In thy seed, one particular person shall descend from thee. The above passage determines that the Messiah would come through the Hebrew race, not from England, not from Rome, not from Greece, 
from the Jewish people. We are so thankful to the Jewish people for giving us God's word, for helping preserve it, for giving us the Messiah. Jesus was a Jew. I've read where Adolf Hitler didn't believe Jesus was Jewish. How crazy. He was a, 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 he was a, a, a Jewish man. The son of Isaac, he had to be descended prophecy, Genesis 21, 12. And God said to Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Uh, Hagar was upset because uh, she said, uh, Sarah was upset because she saw Hagar's son, Ishmael. Uh, she thought he was going to be the heir. And, uh, and Isaac said, no, he got, Abraham reminded him, uh, reminded her about, and Isaac shall they see be called. God reminded her. Uh, Luke 3, 24. Jesus, the son of Isaac. Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. Now God eliminates one half of the lineage of Abraham. Uh, the son of Jacob, that's what's... Uh, true about Israel too, that God didn't promise the land of Israel to anybody but the descendants of Isaac. That's the Israeli people forever. It doesn't belong to anybody else. You say, well, the UN says this. Who cares what the UN says? There's going to be a day they don't exist anymore. There's going to be a day when all the, all the creations of men fall like rubble to the ground and only God's word stands. Meditate on these things. Meditate on the Bible. The son of Jacob, prophecy, Numbers 24, 17. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rule, uh, rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Seth. This is Balaam uh, uh, doing his prophecy when, when Balak tried to hire him to curse Israel. It was fulfilled in Luke 22, 3, 23. Verse 34, Jesus, the son of Jacob. You'll be the tribe of Judah. Prophecy, Genesis 49.10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And Shiloh is another name for the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Uh, fulfilled in Micah 5.2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be the little among the thousands of Judah, Yet out of thee shall come forth one unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings have been from the old of old, from everlasting. Who's from everlasting? Who never had a beginning, never had an end? Will never end. Jesus Christ, his kingdom will never end. Every kingdom is ended on the earth because of corruption. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, he cannot corrupt. That's why he can't tolerate sin in his presence. It would corrupt him. He will judge the world. He will throw everybody in hell rather than tolerate one sin. He will judge you. He does love you, but he will judge sin. He will be of the family line of Jesse. He was born in Bethlehem. Prophecy, Micah 5.2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, it's a little tiny town, yet of these shall he come, unto, uh, shall he come forth unto me, that is to be rule in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting, fulfilled in, in Matthew 2 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, remember when it, when they asked it, uh, uh, when they asked, Herod asked them, Where, Where's the Messiah going to be born? And they said, In Bethlehem of Judah. They knew the prophecies. Why didn't they recognize him? He was to be presented with gifts. Herod, he, uh, uh, Herod, uh, Herod would kill the children. Its prophecy is Jer Jeremiah thirty-one fifteen. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard at Ramah, lamentations after bitter weeping. Rachel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted in her children because they were not. Uh, Herod had all the children, two years old and under c slaughtered, killed. Talk about a wicked government. Be thankful for the government you have. Fulfillment, Matthew 2.16. 2, then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. That means, that word means wroth, means mad. He's upset. And sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coasts, 
thereof, from two years old under, according to the time when he had gently inquired of the wise men. Verse 17, Then it was fulfilled which is spoken by Jeremy the prophet. You notice they use different words sometimes in the, in the, in the, in the New Testament compared. It doesn't say Jeremiah, it says Jeremy. In Ramah was there a voice heard lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. They got killed. Prophecies concerning Christ's nature, he his pre-existence, Micah 5, 2, talks about, we just read it, his is going forth from everlasting. Also in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, he's called the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 41, 4, Isaiah 41, 6, 44, 6. A fulfillment is in Colossians 1, 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. This is why ridiculous to, to, to say, I, am, I have my own God I worship. I have my own higher power. There is no higher power. You can't just make up God in your mind. That's idolatry. Uh, that's why I don't like the AA precept and the 12 steps precept, calling your own higher power. There's only the devil and God. That's the only two powers there are. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. That's one, where someone is with God, and he's called the Word, and the Word was God. Jesus called Word, and he's called God. The same was in the beginning with God. He was already there from the beginning. That's from the very first verse of John 1, 1. He shall be called Lord. Prophecy is in Psalms 110, 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. It also is in Jeremiah 23, 6. Fulfillment. For unto you this is day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Uh, uh, Matthew 22, 43. He saith unto them, How doth then David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David called him Lord, how is he as his son? You see, Jesus corrected reproof and correction. That's what God's word is for. If someone who's been studying the word of God talks to someone, like I talk to a lot of people, and they'll tell me, this is what I think, and I'll tell them the Bible doesn't say that, and I'll tell them what the Bible says, and they say, I don't, like, I don't believe that. You can't make up your own truth. There's only one truth. It's in the word of God. Jesus is the truth, the word of God, the living word. The living word and the written word all agree. He shall be he shall be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Prophecy Isaiah fourteen, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. If you are a believer in Christ, the Bible says, if you live godly, all those in God godly uh, shall suffer persecution. Um Joseph was uh, and Mary were slandered, and Jesus was slandered his whole life because he was slandered to being a, a, a bastard son or something, that he did not have a father, although his father was God, and he was a perfect God in the flesh. So if they called Almighty God some names like that, and he slandered him, how much were they slander you? you uh, be fulfilled in Matthew one twenty three. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel and be, being interpreted is God with us Luke seven sixteen. so he would be called the son of God he would be called Emmanuel he would be descended from Isaac from, from Jacob from the tribe of Judah from David these prove these were written prophecies written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was born if I looked into the future and I tried to write 2,000 years from now, there's going to be a city called Los Angeles. It's going to be in a foreign country, and it's going to raise up and become a mighty city out of a, out of a little small town and write everything about it. That's amazing. Uh, you know, there are false prophets in this world. The devil has false prophets. Gene Dixon uh, was one. Uh, Edgar Casey, that's Nostradamus. Nostradamus and all them, if, if they say something that doesn't come 100% true, the Bible uh, command was to stone them to death. That's the conclusion of uh, um, Lesson 3. I hope you go on to Lesson 4 of uh, Bible prophecy, and we're studying right now 
the Messianic prophecies in Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, bless today. Bless your word. Bless these lessons. Thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen.